Hey, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Gentleman Pursuits podcast. Hope you are doing well, staying healthy, staying hydrated. Uh, make sure you take some time every week, take some time off to get in tune with yourself, to spend some time with yourself because a tough time like these, especially lockdowns and shit going on around the world, uh, you know, our sanity can, you know, can take a toll. So, but you know what day's today? You know what day's today? Today is, yes, it's my birthday. Woo! Round of applause. It's my birthday. Yes, sir. It's my 21. Yeah, it's my, I, I just turned 21 today. So for my birthday present, we have this lovely gentleman here with us on a podcast. <laughs> one of the, like, seriously, one of the realest person, most down to earth person I've ever yeah. met. Probably one of the funniest too. Like his timing on punchline is fucking immaculate. Uh, so last week we have Matt Malik. Uh, the perfumer from Vancouver as well. And today we have Reginald Ferguson, the fashion consultant here with us today. How are you doing, Reg? Hey, I'm well, Ryan. I did not know it was your birthday, so happy birthday. Oh, I couldn't be thank you. couldn't be more touched. You should be <laughs> celebrating, which I know is limiting now. But to, to We're do celebrating. A, no, absolutely. To do an yeah, episode yeah. with you on your birthday. Hell yeah. Right? So you better make it good then. <laughs> Wow, you gave me all these compliments, and now, and now, and now you're doing the behind the scenes in front of the screen. Okay, I'm not gonna cut this part out. So now, you're <laughs> no, comfortable. you shouldn't. I'm, sure, I'm, I'm clean, man. I'm clean. Hey, hey, a lot, of, okay. a lot of pressure. You put all that pressure on me, but I, I can take it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's my birthday, and I mean, I love doing interviews, so it doesn't really matter. I know. And, no, I know what you think, but I, like I said, I had no idea, so. I couldn't hey, be more cool, touched. Man. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy, happy birthday, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Hope before you next year, hope to, yeah. Yeah, before for, anything, before the start yes. of anything, let's, because you're a fashion consultant and obviously this episode is about fashion, about men's I fashion. Am. I am. Let's give us a little fit check. Like, what are you wearing today? Cause you look fucking dapper sure. as shit as always. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, first of all, I want to make it clear to the audience. I have a business. It's called New York Fashion Geek. So you can mm -hmm. find me on the Insta under that name. Also, mm -hmm. my website is nyfashiongeek.com. Mm -hmm. You could also find me on Facebook. You could find me on LinkedIn. I do a yes, little, little Twitter action, but it, oh, TikTok now. Crazy. I'm not doing You're doing TikTok? Hell yeah, dude. I, I gotta check that out. I'm doing TikTok. Yes. Yeah, so I gotta check that real. out. But uh, Fit Check. Bitch, so yeah. rocking the uh, rocking the plaid dress shirt today, proper cloth mm -hmm. represent mm -hmm. New York City. Got my little bling, got a Gruen. Yeah. Put that uh, put that up there. What's that? Yes, What's there's that? some writing on it. Yes, it's the uh, Schuylkill uh, Navy 100th anniversary. So That's, I, uh, I like the I like the strap. Like yes, how it's clean the original, it is. Yeah. this is the original strap. Nice. And this watch is 50s era Gruen, but it's it's celebrating a uh, a rowing club in Philadelphia. Though I'm a native mm -hmm. New Yorker, I just really I just really like that significance. Never had a watch mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Um Lamb's wool sweater vest. Mm -hmm. And uh gold gold tie, banana republic. So uh, I got Banana Nicole, Republic Nicole tie too. There you go. Yeah, I yeah. got this tie in Banana Republic in West Palm Beach. What, okay. Many moons ago. Yeah, they had a sale. I literally was there for a bunch of days on some business, and I kept on going in like a hawk, just. Mm. Cool, cool. And right. then the last day I came, I attacked. Yeah. Like, huh, finally, like I gotta, I gotta get something. Yeah, 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 yeah. So okay. I've had this tie for way too long. For way, <laughs> so now you gotta wear it. <laughs> it's hey, it's, it's cool. as old as it's, it's as old as you, for real. Yeah. For real? No way. Yeah, for real. yeah, 20 yeah for real. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For Damn. Real. Oh, okay. older, older. I'm being kind to myself. Older. older this tie's old. Okay. This tie's older than you. Okay. But if you say vintage, I'll punch you through the screen. <laughs> no, I'm 
So no, that's said, what happens, uh, man. That's what happens. Yes. Uh, New York fashion geek, your business, yes. your uh, essentially your fashion consultant business. Yes, that's right? my brand. Yes. So my, it's my fashion consultancy. Yes. So oftentimes when people say, oh, I'm a consultant, I'm a consultant, I actually don't fucking know what they do. So when you're a fashion consultant, what kind of work are you currently doing? And yeah, like give us like a, like a brief presentation of like your scope of work. Like what do sure. you do? Sure, yeah. certainly. The reason why I call myself a consultant and not a stylist to be clear is really out of respect for a stylist. <laughs> I don't think, yeah, no, I don't think I can okay. do what they do. Uh, you're not gonna see me oh. on a set, for example. But mm. what I do, and I think it probably speaks to my business background. I went to NYU, I went to Stern School of Business. Mm. <clears throat> When you're when you're a consultant, it's about strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. And I view yes. that way with the customer, meaning that it's a it's a very thorough investigatory conversation to figure out what their goals are mm -hmm. and really how to make them the best that they can be. Mm. So that's why I feel it is consulting, you know, it's in nature. Right, right. So normally, what kind of questions do people come to you with? Or do they just like, hey, Rich, I need your help, but I don't really know. So just give me some pointers. Like, it's usually, kind of it's usually, usually it's usually, yeah, it's usually the latter. Because okay. some people come to me directly through any of my social media or website. Sometimes it's a referral. Like, for example, I had a client, his girlfriend gave the service as a, as a birthday gift. So again, it's really, it's about me asking many questions mm. and we go from closet inventory to personal shopping and everything in between. Wow. That's a lot. Yes. Yes, it can be. I like to consider myself a personal trainer for fashion. That's a, that's a nice way to put it. Yes. That's exactly what this is so yeah. yes is it is it like do you find it like tough to kind of teach people how to dress because sometimes okay i'm obviously i'm not a consultant but if i have to let's say my friend we're like oh should i wear this should i wear that what i suggest oftentimes doesn't align with what they want so it's really hard to actually give them advice, like especially. Right, that's, especially not, that's not good. <laughs> right, that's not good. <laughs> so you're not, good, it, you're not a good friend, Ryan. That's all I'm saying. Oh, damn. <laughs> I'm not. I, I got to refer them to you then. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so do do you find it hard to give them suggestions? No, because the one thing you have to understand in this line of business is that it's not about you. I have clear cut understanding and sensibilities about color, cut, coordination, size. Mm. But the point is the clients are not mini Reginald Ferguson's. Again, as I said earlier, it's for them to be, cause this took years to build. They couldn't even do this if they tried. So it's really about them being the best they can be. So that's why as many questions as you can ask and literally filing down you know, your notes as a profile. It's mm. it's challenging them, certainly. Yeah. In certain, and that's where I come in. I'll do a nudge. Yeah. Like, for example, maybe this color is too bold for most people. And based on what I'm already doing for them, I may suggest it. I may go, come on, you could do it. You could do mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes I get a little, little grimy. Like, grow a set. Come on. Step up. So... But yeah, you really, you really want to fit the person's goals and aspirations. You don't want them to wear something in which later on, like maybe in the heat of the moment, they were passionate and it was like, oh, this is great. And then later on they go, oh, this is not me at all. Right, right, some right. People, some people don't have a definition of what their style is and clearly that's what I'm aiding them in. But yes. I think there's a difference between nudging and challenging someone versus just putting your own steez on someone else. That's that's not good. That's 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 a nice way to put it. So do you usually 
so obviously you ask them questions, know what their general style is, like, you know, yes. kind of understand what they are feeling and not feeling. But do you also yes. apply so-called current fashion trend to your suggestions? Or is it just tailor made? It's your style. I'm not going to push. Like, let's say right now, um, let's say uh, two years ago, dad shoes, like bulky shoes is, is a thing. Okay. Do you incorporate that into your suggestions in their outfit? It really, it really depends. And also, I want to be clear in terms of the methodology. I send them a questionnaire before we even meet. I send them a Google form mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they fill it out. But I still then, upon meeting them, ask additional questions, kind of like a right. filling in of the gaps, because you don't want right. to inundate them with questions before they even meet you. So right, it's yeah, a one, yeah. you know, it's it's simple. There may be only one or two required answers. Uh -huh. When you when you do the physical meet, you know, which mm -hmm. we did pre-COVID, then you, like I said, you really fill in the gaps. To answer your question though specifically. I certainly am aware of trends, but applying them, that's that's a different story. The, I think the whole point is no matter whom the customer is, you don't want them to look stupid. And their oh, styles, again, their styles vary. They're different. I understand that and I respect that. But I don't, I really just kind of go with the flow because I'm fortunate enough that I have this file system <laughs> in my mm -hmm. head. So I just work, I really work within the confines of the interests and desires and goals of the customer. That's, that's great, man. That's great. So give us a few tips here, pro tips. How can someone, let's say, uh, who started, who just started actually caring about how they look. Okay. You know, some people just don't give a fuck. Yeah, uh, so yeah, a lot of men. So they, yeah, so they just started, and they are like really frustrated. It's like, ah, oh, damn, what's my style? Like, what should I wear? What do I do? It's like, what's like maybe like some tips to give them, like beginners to find their style. Sure, I think really the beginning tip is for you to be patient while you figure it out. Be because because yeah, because I think most men don't have an idea or a sense. I realize as I get older, as I'm entering the second half of life, that I take all of my styling for granted because I literally grew up in it. If you look on my website, I have a page that's dedicated to my family. Mm. And my mom and my late grandparents were my immediate teachers and mentors in styling and fashion. Mm. And they were just normal folks. It's not that they worked in retail or anything like that. Mm. But it was so important in my family that I'm the latest representation of that. Or like they used to tease, he took it and he went crazy. So because clearly I'm, I'm really, I'm really into it. So mm -hmm. I realize like many things in my life, it's something I take for granted because I was literally nurtured in styling and fashion, literally. So mm. not everyone is blessed that way. So to me, that means for those individuals, it is trial and error. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It takes time. I mean, right. you're, half my, you're half my age, right? So the style you have now is a foundation. Yes. But it could it could radically change within the next five, 10 years. And again, that's OK. Yeah. It changed a lot, to be honest. There, there you yeah. go. I remember when I first started doing my podcast, particularly with my co-host. Yeah. I was talking. We had uh, we had the uh, Satorial Teenager on. I don't know if you follow him on Instagram and uh, Yvonne, Yvonne Bonsky. And he's a he's a cool kid. I like him. I love teasing him because he dresses in classic menswear, but but literally old school, like some, oh yeah yeah so like double some, breasted morning coats. I mean, this, he's that morning. guy. Oh so, oh yeah yeah. Was, he's, okay. he's he's that dude. So I remember in that interview talking about how when I used to rock sneakers and track suits, and my co-host looked at me like, "What?" And I'm like, "Of course." 
at that age, of course I did. It didn't mean that I didn't have sport jackets and pants, mm -hmm. but of course I, I did everything that my peer group did, yet I also was distinct and did mm. things, not necessarily different, but did things in a classic vein. But yeah. of course I rocked sneakers and sweat, you know, sweat suits and track suits and yeah. yeah. Of I mean, every, I did. everyone does that. Did. Everyone does that. Yeah, it's just oh, not basic. everyone because he because he doesn't. He oh, doesn't. He doesn't. He only has one pair of just one pair of sneakers. I'm like, kid, please grow, grow a little, <laughs> live a little, please. But he won't, and and that's okay. I respect his tees. I like teasing mm -hmm. about it, but I also have great respect for it because he's very clear about who he is at a very young age. He's your peer, freshman in college now, and he knows what he likes. He knows what he doesn't like. That's okay. Oh. To me, my feeling is at that age, I had a range. Mm -hmm. I'm the first generation of hip hop. So mm -hmm. I definitely rock hip hop gear, but I mm -hmm. also was a prep school kid. Do you have FUBU? So I was not a FUBU guy. Okay. I was not a FUBU guy. No. True religion? No, no. Okay. I didn't, I didn't get caught up in every brand trap, so to speak. I'm not saying that I didn't ever. Oh yeah, yeah I'm just asking, lie. yeah. Yeah, no, 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 legitimate yeah, yeah. questions. So, uh, so, so no. And some of those items I still have, and I don't have to tell you a trend now, particularly in streetwear, is the 80s and 90s are back. And it's fun looking at kids like y'all, like you, and looking at gear and going, oh my gosh, I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I did it first before it was cool. You kids. No, are we did it cold. first and it was no, 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 not at all. No, no lawn chair on that one. There's lawn chair, other conversations I can have. But that, no, we did it and we did it fly. Yeah. Uh, but it's great to see that. And I've I've caught up in it. I go yeah, on yeah. Etsy sometimes. I've got, I'm able now to acquire yeah. some brands that I didn't have the means growing up or yeah. I didn't have the exposure, meaning I didn't know where to go. So I just copped a Le Coq Sportif track jacket. I haven't okay. posted it on the gram, okay. but I just did. It's dope as hell. Yeah. Uh, I think like two months ago, I bought this like old, like vintage leather varsity jacket. Nice. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's vintage. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I'm laughing. You know, when we talked earlier, I'm like, don't yeah. call my tie vintage. But for all <laughs> intents and purposes, it is a vintage tie. It's just weird yeah. when you own it, you purchased it, but time continues to go on with or without you. And now, yeah, I had a friend who did that once. He looked at some, he was like, oh, I have classic gap tees, the pocket tees from when I was growing oh, up. Oh, that was like I a long time ago. Thanks. I haven't changed my size. <laughs> haven't changed my size too much, fortunately. And I rocked one once, and he was like, "Oh, that's vintage." I was like, "You say that again, I will bust you. I will up, deck you in your mouth." Your, Come on, oh, yeah, say it pretty again. much. I pretty dare much. You. <laughs> I mean, you know, but what are you gonna do? I'm happy. To, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy that I'm still pretty much my size. So, uh, yeah, like circling back to the change of style, I yes. remember like two years ago, because I was huge into bodybuilding. Like at one point, oh. when I first when I first started playing rugby, I played rugby, uh, but I stopped because I broke my rib. But at that point, I was like super into bodybuilding and to a point where it's like obsessed with my how my body looks. So all like my closet consists of like really tight tees, like because I want nice. people to, to yeah. know that I work out, work. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until like there's a breaking point. And now I, I'm not as obsessed. So I think the time where I stopped caring so much about how my muscle looks is when I start to really get into fashion because I allow myself to actually understand or appreciate other kinds of clothes or other kinds of fit. Because before it's just sure. small, I'm going to wear one size down. Right, you were doing gotta, tight. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now it's like, oh, oversized. Oh, it looks good. Oh, it's tight. Sometimes you wear it tight, like fit it. Sometimes oversized looks good. So I allowed like um, free of mind to explore uh, 
yeah so so that's like a whole journey i had it's yes great. and that's that's how it works that's literally how it works it has yeah. to be a journey yeah. it has to be you know when people look at me now kind of like again my co-host they think that i've been like this literally since coming out the womb certainly i had instructions and guidance but i was still a kid you know i was a hip-hop kid i was a prep school kid both were my realities mm -hmm. golden age of rap hip-hop era growing up in new york where it all mm -hmm. started and going mm -hmm. to prep school so it was it was a marriage of my sensibilities through hip hop and my family's sensibilities through classic menswear as people like to coin it now. So yeah. but things have changed and tweaked. Now I feel there probably won't be any more changes. Actually, I know that. I feel comfortable and confident in saying that. Mm. So I'm done. But I know some peers they're still going through evolutions. That's fine. But yeah, that's fine but it's a journey. not me it's yeah but me the it's a it's a wrap so now i think for the remaining time it's just it's a tweak here and there but there'll be no yeah more yeah, yeah i mean evolution. even though there are no like big like drastic changes uh they're gonna be like refinement right exactly yeah. that's what yeah, i yeah. do and i'm yeah, overboard exactly. with it anyway like for example i've always so i'll tell you a funny story so you would tell me about hey break down your gear so sweater vest, mm -hmm. when I was your age, I had mad vest, sweater vest, and just vest in general. I used to rock oh, them all the time, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember in school, they used to call me sweater vest man. <laughs> sweater Creative. vest man. Yeah, like I, was, like I was a superhero. So, and even my family started teasing me about that. Mm -hmm. So I literally have had vest in my wardrobe since. Mm-hmm. My point is, once I started with COVID doing Zooms and doing IG Lives, mm -hmm. I said to myself, this is a good look. So now this is a recent acquisition. It's an old school vest, mm -hmm. but I just picked it up on eBay, keeping it real. So yeah. like that style is like embedded in you yeah even though you're right. evolved but it's embedded in exactly you. exactly and it, it is again representative of classic menswear style but mm -hmm. like i said i realized there's nothing wrong if i just had a shirt on open collar or a shirt and a tie but mm -hmm. i i feel i'm telegenic and that's also one of the strengths of being a consultant and i felt for the screen the sweater vest was was a good ensemble. Mm. So that's why every time now I did a zoom yesterday, I had I had on my Navy one with a Navy shirt and a mm -hmm. green pattern tie. So I like the look, but I think the look represents well on screen. Mm. OK, so another burning question I have is that so obviously General Pursuits talk about watches and whiskeys. So yes, you do what's your opinion on like pairing watches and your outfit? Sure. It's extremely important. So, okay. So I knew this was going to be the kit for today. You can't see, but I have Navy cords on and mm -hmm. I have burgundy Clark wild bees high top. Okay. So, so generally the way I coordinate an outfit with the watch as an accessory really again harkens back from how I grew up, particularly from a woman's wear standpoint. I'm mm. generally about the shoe matching the belt, matching the watch. Yes. I'm that, Golden I'm that dude. standard. Yes. I'm that, yes, yes, yes. I'm that dude. So today, Burgundy Wally's, as people like to call them now, I used to just call them Clark's, Burgundy Clark Wally's. Burgundy knit, uh, you know, knotted braided belt. Mm -hmm. This I changed up a little bit just because I acquired this watch recently mm -hmm. and it's dope. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know if it would come up in conversation, but I just felt, hey, I'm going to do it a little bit different. The burgundy, and I know you can't see it. And of course, I could go like that, but the oh, burgundy. Oh, I can see a little stripe. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's a NATO, it's a NATO stripe. And again, original 
that burgundy goes with the belt, goes with the shoes, and the blue yes. goes with the blue. Mm-hmm. And the hands actually are blue. Obviously, you can't see that. And I I love the novelty of the watch. Like I said, I'm not from Philly. And yeah, but I have one that represents, you know, Philly, a Philly crew, Philly, you know, right, 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 right. So yeah. But listen, the foundation of those rules also are set for people to go against them if they so choose. So, mm. you know, because to me, matching doesn't necessarily mean, as people like to tease now, matchy matchy. Contrast is contrast is matching. So, yes, 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 but, yes. But you know, again, it's I know it's hard to see on screen, but it complements my outfit smoothly. And always remember this, even when I'm on screen, but certainly when I'm outside, particularly pre-COVID, I'm a walking mm-hmm. advertisement for my business every day. Yeah, yeah. Now, the good news is even before I had a business, I was fly. But Oh, yeah, this, always be fly, this, hashtag always be fly, yeah. That is, <laughs> yeah, that is, yes, thank you, yeah. I mean, again, another old school, old school hip hop phrase that I've that I've used for my business because I feel that way. I mean, that's like just a New York defense. Like, yo, I'm always fly. Always fly. Always. <laughs> yeah. Always. Like, no matter yeah. what. No I matter stay what. fly. I be, As I tease with a buddy of mine who lives in a story, a big shout out to Ben Rosenfeld. I told him this must be the hundred thousandth, you know, meaning like counting from the day of my birth. I'm like, I've never mm. fallen off. <laughs> Ever. Ever. Even if I had a hoodie or a sweats. Or, I'm still fly. Still fly. Yeah, I I'm never, cruising, bro. Never, never, never stop. Never stop. Never stop. Oh, yeah. The the reason why I asked that question is because yes. uh a uh, few weeks back I had like a like a crisis. The crisis is stemmed from the fact that if you look at watches as an accessory, yes. Um then the way you pair a watch or the way you wear a watch is going to be drastically different. But if you're like a watch geek like myself uh, or just a watch lover in general, your watch can be the staple item in your outfit. So you may dress around it instead of the watch. Oh, outfit. wow. Wow. Right? So, I never and, thought of that. And another thing that led to the crisis is that why let's say gucci they make watches ralph lauren they make watches tom ford right i have a gucci watch yeah they make those watches so they're like so people will be like oh i bought this outfit and i saw this watch oh they're gonna go together let me buy this watch and but sometimes as someone that's in like deep in the watch community we see these as fashion watches and we always deem them as just shit not because like the gear is shit but sometimes their design it's just um like you you can see the lack of effort to design mm. them and they're just simply selling these watch because they themselves is a big brand or a big design house Understood. so what's your opinion on what i just said certainly well the first thing Clearly, there is a chasm between you and I when it comes to orology, because if and I'd like to give a shout out to my podcast, if anyone wants to listen, it's called The Fashion Geeks. You can find it on every platform. My link point in, is link down below. <laughs> yeah. So my point is, I recently had Pedro Mendez on the pod and we talked about quartz watches. I would I would argue, I think, effectively that Pedro is in your crew. So meaning individuals who are meta in terms of watches. Mm. I'm not that guy. Mm. I have a lot of watches. I have a lot of brands. Like I said, I mean, I love this Elgin. I like vintage Mm -hmm. watches. This is from the 50s. Like I said, and I know I'm beating it over the head, but I love that it represents you know, this rowing crew. Yes, the sentiment value. It's cool. And I have no linkage to that at all. Oh, okay. Just, yeah, I yeah, just yeah. It, That's a nice I'm watch a, still. Right. I'm just a native. I'm a native New Yorker, right? I have no Philly mm-hmm. uh, roots. But my, my point is, when you mentioned Gucci, 
So my grail was the 1980s Gucci watch, black leather. Yeah, search it as we're talking. You know, I thought you would immediately know because you're a, you know, you're a watch geek. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I don't know a lot of things and I don't pretend I know things. I'll I know. Just I'm just you. busting. <laughs> I'm just busting on you. So the classic one is the black leather band, uh, black face, Roman numerals with a gold bezel. Oh, is it this one? Uh, this no, it's here. it's it's like that, but it, it's a it's a gold bezel with Roman numerals. Oh, this is gold with Roman numerals. But that, that's Roman numerals in the face. I'm talking about yeah. Roman numerals on the bezel. On the bezel, damn, okay. Yes, on the bezel. Oh, this, this right here? Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's a classic. See, now this, I wouldn't say is trash. Like I Thank see you. the reason I, I see the, okay. So a lot of the, okay, continue. Sorry. I'll, I'll have no, 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 you know, we can go, but you can chime in. So my point is I understand to a great extent about licensing with fashion brands and watches. I understand that to, to an extent that Gucci was my grail because when I was, because it was unattainable, I was a little kid. I like the style. They also have one in which they have the Italian colors on the face mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with that same bezel. So, uh, the, I mean, the uh, Gucci colors. Mm. So, so it was a green and uh, green and red uh, in the face. So that wasn't attainable to me as a, as a kid. And I mm -hmm. saw someone with one on a few years ago because every once in a while I would look around and I'd see it on eBay. And I decided to cop it a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And I love it. I don't wear a lot of black shoes because that's the only time I'd wear a black band. <clears throat> and I don't mm -hmm. interchange a band for something like that. NATO mm -hmm. straps, yes. But I freaking love it. When I have it on with a suit, mm -hmm. I think it's dope as heck. I think, and again, not having the sphere of knowledge that people like yourself and your ilk have. From the little bit I know, that Ralph Lauren collab with Rake, I don't think that's probably a garbage watch. So, and even the just the, the Ralph one Lauren. With the teddy bear. Yeah, yeah. And even the Ralph Lauren ones on their own. Uh -huh. I'm sure the movements are not garbage, but do I literally know? No, I don't, I don't know. And I don't claim to know. Watches are important to me, but again, I'm not meta. So yeah, yeah. I have different brands. I have mechanical and quartz. I have swatches. Mm -hmm. I love all the watches I have. Mm -hmm. And my taste could, could elevate to another level potentially. I started remembering brands that I hadn't recalled since a child, really doing COVID because you have time. So grails for me, probably a Piaget, mm. a long jeans. Yes. Omega to me is just kind of beyond my reach because for me, I'm very acute about budget versus the purchase of a watch. So I'm not that guy yes. that Hey, ten thousand dollars. I'll never be that guy. Yes. I don't have that. I don't have that type of interest. Okay. For me, yeah. for me, I can find a great watch, particularly a vintage, like sub one hundred, sub one hundred, sub one hundred. Yeah, I can, and yeah. I've done it. But to me, to your point, I mean, a normal budget for me mm -hmm. is two bills. I think if I'm balling, when I blow up, then it'd still be half a G. Hey, next year, man, next year, you can do absolutely. that. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. I'm after God's ears. But my point is to go north of 500 for me doesn't doesn't make sense. Another grail is one of those vintage uh, Dunhill watches. So, and I do like, I wanna be clear, I do like those, those Cartiers, like that, you know, the original, I'm drawing a blank on the name, but you know the yes. one I mean. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah that, you know, started as a flight watch, so to speak. Uh, Santos DeMont. Thank you, Santos, yeah. thank you. Yeah, I like that. 
I love I think that. That's fly, I, yeah. I think that's fly as hell. So, so, but again, I think some of my sensibilities clearly come from my grandparents. And if I see a ten thousand dollar watch, in the words of my grandparents, so what does it do? My point is, what does it do differently than the watch I have that I caught for two hundred dollars? So, yeah, 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 yeah. So the reason I am, I was like kind of mad at these watches is not because, oh, the mechanics or the movement is shit. Why are you pricing it so high? It's because from afar, especially Gucci watches now or Ralph Lauren, from afar, you can tell they are cheaping out on materials. Really? It's like, it's, it's more, yeah, you can, you can, um, I don't know about you, but at least for me, no, you have uh, that I can, eye. I don't claim to necessarily have that. I eye. can I can tell that these materials are not top notch, which is OK, if because if your intention is to make a watch to go with your outfit, then maybe you just want the look, but not. Necessarily. But I think but, but I think to your point, if you're if you're this high end brand, you should have high end materials. Exactly. And no, but if you want to use cheaper materials, OK, then make it cheaper. Right. But no, because you want, you need to save face. You want to still be the Gucci, the, you know, the grail that everyone wants. So you're going to price your watch at $2,000 with cheap materials. But yeah, people, see, and that's why, that's why, like, I know you were talking about, was it Richard Meal on your pod? Those watches. Uh -huh. And I'll never, I don't have an interest in those watches. I also don't have an interest in a Panerai. So, yeah, you know, again, I don't. think I think because you, you again, you brought up something. I realized I didn't address it. It's so interesting to hear. And that's why I said there's a chasm between us, but not in a bad way that you you and your ilk have your watch. And like you said, and then you plan a whole outfit around it. Not for me, from, but I'm just saying some. Oh, people OK, do. but you said there some are people, people do. who do that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, which yeah. I respect. That's yeah. not me, but I, I respect that skews. For me, I guess technically it's the last thing, but obviously mm -hmm. it's not the last thing as an afterthought. <laughs> it's just, oh, oh, you know, the shirt, the tie, the belt, yeah. the pants, the shoes. Let me put shoes. this one on today. And, then, I, like and then, yeah, right. And then I, yeah. I'm going to keep it real. I open up my case yeah, because I have a watch case. Open up the case, boop, yeah. and I pull out a watch. That's yes. what I do. And I'm not balling, but a case made sense. I got a case, I don't know, a year ago because mm -hmm. I had all my watches in, in my sock drawer, so to speak. Not that they were haphazard, but I felt, oh, I need better organization. So yes. I had these individual cuffs, you know, mm -hmm. put my watch, and I like that. I like I can wake up in the morning. So, and also it keeps, it keeps the control about, hey, don't exceed this amount. Right, of, right, right. Slots. I got, I got eight slots. That's it. I'm not gonna <laughs> right. buy another case. I'm right, not gonna buy right. eight more. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so, what are you rocking, by the way? I'm. I just uh, bought this before, uh, like on Christmas. It arrived on Christmas. It's a Seiko. Nice. Let me just, if I can show it on camera. It's enamel dial. It's Whoa. blue. Yeah, and nice. uh, it's not focusing, but whatever. No, understood. Um, and yeah, it's a Seiko Passat. And I got it straight from uh, Japan's market because it's only limited in Japan's market. Whoa, very and cool. At a, at a way cheaper price. So maybe I'm looking to flip it maybe uh, uh, after a while. You know, trying to make some bank. You know, I got to chase the back <laughs> sometimes, bro. <laughs> but, it just, uh, yeah, it just it's, a, it's a mighty the, watch. The, yeah, it looks very pretty. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the Seiko yeah, crew. No, no, I'm just no, just just. Yeah, I, yeah, I love I love Seiko. In a way, in a I way, I like Seiko too. Like, yeah, yeah. In a way, it's I'm cheering for the underdog. In a way, <laughs> because a lot of people, especially a lot of watch enthusiasts, that's not from Asia. Sometimes, or older people, they would have a like a negative stigma towards Seiko. Because, really? Yeah, because they think. It's, uh, it's cheaper. That's why the production's lower. The production value is lower. And then 
the quartz crisis or the quartz oh. evolution, however you want to call uh, it. Yeah, uh, and, uh, they just have kind of like a negative image. But no, but nowadays, younger collectors, they have, they realize that no, Seiko make gorgeous watches. And I like Seiko. But, I mean, I have a yeah. bunch of Seikos. The reason why I made a face when you did uh, quartz crisis and revolution, I don't know if you heard my IG live for Pedro Mendez. We didn't talk about it during the pod. Yeah, you told me that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And to be honest, I didn't want to. I didn't want to talk about that. I don't want to um, talk about that either. But it's just. I mean, no. it's part of the. No, happens. no, no, no. Right. Yeah. No. But my yeah. point is, I mean, I think the reason why you just gave it two distinctions is the reason that I listed three. Oh, what's quartz what's crisis, the third? Quartz crisis, quartz disruption. That's Pedro Mendez's, and quartz revolution. Yeah. So for me, it's a revolution. Mm -hmm. The only reason why it was a crisis is because of of the color of the skin in which the person bemoaned the crisis. Yeah. Hey, so, I gotta I gotta rep my set, bro. I gotta. Rep. <laughs> I totally understand that. I mean, the funny thing is, I like Seikos. Again, I mentioned it on that pod in my intro. Mm -hmm. My late grandparents gave me a Seiko as a graduation gift, and it's a tank. And day. I cherish it. I cherish it to this day. And it's a quartz. Yeah. So my point is everybody back the F up. So <laughs> no one's challenging me on that. I love it. And I have other Seiko quartzes. And guess what? I also have Seiko mechanicals. Yeah. Am I yeah, part yeah. of the Seiko boys? Maybe. I don't know. But I mean, I'm not deep like you are. And again, you know, people in your circle, so to speak. This is yeah. so many brands and they all have interesting stories and histories. And it's funny. We're mm. talking about Seiko. I got a, I got a vintage one, 1970s, uh, white face, silver band, 17 jewels, uh, date, not day, date, just date. Mm -hmm. It's at, it's at the shop in my hood. <laughs> gotta, <laughs> gotta go pick it up. Had to, had to, had to get service. Right, right, right. Yeah. I gotta so, get my other one service too. So, okay, we've been we've been talking about watches and outfit and how to pair them and you know just the general like concept towards watches and within the fashion community sometimes. So let me go back to just fashion and clothing a little bit. So you sure. yourself, I, as a lot of people would like to say, is like into classic menswear, uh, that Damn. kind of fashion, right? So, and then as, as the first time I called you, I said, hey, like, I know a lot of people are gonna hate me, but I love Tom Brown, right? Okay, so what's your opinion or your point of view on brands like Tom Brown, maybe Easy Miyake, maybe <clears throat> Tom Ford, like brands like these? Sure, well, they're all different from one another. So let's be clear. Yes. So my point is, if you want to, we could break them down one at a time because to sure. view them in a grouping is, I don't think, fair uh, to myself, and it's not fair to them. Okay. So, Tom Brown, you can already see it on my face. I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan. Yes. I don't, I don't knock anyone's hustle. I don't knock anyone's steeds mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. all. But it doesn't mean that I'm all in for everybody. Just like people aren't yeah. all in for me. So, and I like what you said early when you when you brought me on about me being down to earth and being real because mm -hmm. real means so many things now and keeping it real, you know, a phrase yeah, that yeah, we call yeah, yeah. But I do keep it real, son. Um, yeah, I know. That's why I said it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, I appreciate that. But you no, know, it's it's not my steez. I don't, listen, I'm making a face right now because the image I have immediately is LeBron. So when, when oh, LeBron, shorts. when LeBron, yeah, with the short suit, when yeah. LeBron, rocked that and then he rocked it for his teammates you know he bought he bought the outfits for his teammates yeah, that's crazy <laughs> I freaking why hate why it. though then, why though because i think it looks silly that's why this is all subjective because so of the be short cool. or because yeah because of the short yeah. okay yeah that's the reason listen tom brown has a range yeah tom yeah, yeah. brown did black fleece for brooks brothers and mm -hmm. none of that gear was short. <laughs> so, 
So I don't I don't like that. And I told you what's really interesting about that brand is I have a friend who used to work there. And I told mm-hmm. you the Japanese market is like their stands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That brand. Yeah. They, they used to come in the store. A lot of them didn't speak English. And I'm not saying that, you know, in a jingoist way or anything, but they didn't, yeah. they barely spoke any English and they would come and just go, Tom Brown, Tom Brown, Tom Brown, Tom Brown, Tom Brown. I mean, it could have been a matchbook cover. And that's the kind of fandom with yeah. that market. It was mm-hmm. crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, and of course, my boy loved it, right? He's a commissioned salesperson. So, yeah. but he, but also, I think his point was they were coming in mm-hmm. to an extent because of hype, because of a cult of personality. Oh, for sure. for sure. It's been created by that brand. And mm-hmm. again, I'm still not saying that in a negative way or an insulting way or in a pejorative way. I'm just saying it in a factual one. Mm, yeah. It's not it's not my steez, never has been, never will be. Next. Yeah. Issey Miyake. I'm very I'm fond, though I don't have any pieces. I'm very fond of Issey Miyake. Why? To be honest, not from the menswear standpoint, but from the women's wear standpoint. Mm. So uh my mom, my late mom, definitely one of my sisters rock that brand, like that brand. So I always respected the brand. Mm -hmm. So, but I don't have any, you know, I don't have any pieces um, by Issey Miyake, but, you know, mad, mad respect and been in the game for a long time. Long time. When you have a brand that can last through some- All them shits, yeah. uh, Epics of time, I mean, that's, that's, that's really saying something. Tom Ford. So this is probably somewhere in the middle. So Tom Ford, I have mad respect for Tom Ford, but I will be clear from a menswear standpoint, I don't understand spending that much money on an off the rack suit. That doesn't yes. make sense to me. Yes. That doesn't make sense to me uh, in the least. You can mm-hmm. get a bespoke suit and we know how that term is used loosely, wildly, interchangeably, poorly. But you can literally go to a tailor and get a suit made from scratch. Less than half with an original with an right with an original pattern and sourcing any kind of wool, silk, whatever yeah. material that you want. And like yeah. you said, half, half at worst. Maybe you come in a third. Mm-hmm. So I don't understand that. But right, that's right, also right. because I think, again, from my knowledge, from my nurturing, from my learning, from my experience, I think mm-hmm. the one thing I bring to to my clients is that their money is like my money. So yes. clearly the bigger the budget they have, the better we can play. But mm-hmm. the point is, I'm not trying to be a spendthrift with, with their money because I wouldn't do that for my darn self. Mm -hmm. So Tom Ford, again, to his credit, and listen, Tom Ford's been in the game for decades. So again, much respect, much respect. So can't knock the hustle. And why would I? But I'm smart enough to know that if I was stacking mad chips like that, there would be no Tom Ford in the crib. (laughs) So it just wouldn't be. Maybe Maybe the cologne. I don't know. That, I don't even know. That, what oh, Tom Ford's cologne is another story. Like it's just oh, it's really, like that. really nice. Yes, Tom okay, Ford's see? cologne to me, okay. perfume to me is crazy. I mean, the reason why I I I love Tom Ford, but not the brand. I love Tom Ford, the person, the designer, the businessman, right? The designer, right? Right. That's what I'm saying. That's that's yeah. my respect. That's when I said yeah, earlier yeah, yeah, yeah. when I have respect. That's what it is. But I, I couldn't, in good conscience, drop all that money. Oh, off the rack suit. Oh, ready to, yeah, yeah, yeah. And hey, I, I love on, him. Man. I love him back when he was still designing for Gucci. Gucci, and right. Shit was insane. But I mean, now they look good, but the price just, I just can't justify uh, the price, right? I and can't, I can't either. I think it's the, uh, sometimes I think it's quite sad in the fashion industry that it's really, it's really all about marketing. 
right? It's like it really, Brad's it like, really is. It really is. That's why I'm so proud that I had a mom and a set of grandparents who nurtured me in fashion. So this is a phrase yeah. I've been using lately, and usually I don't pat myself on the back at all. But I realize as I've gotten older, particularly when mm-hmm. I look at my peers, mm-hmm. I am I am a fashion prodigy. Hell now, yeah. I'm not a tailor. I'm not a designer. I wouldn't know what to do with a pair of shears. But right. what I, but what I understand is I understand clothing. Mm-hmm. I understand fit. I understand fabric. I understand design. I understand color and coordination. Okay. So that's what I bring to the table. And I didn't go to FIT. I didn't go to Parsons. I'm erudite. But my point is. Nice word. I thank you. I also understand. Growing up, there was a phrase and it preceded me. (laughs) Probably it was my grandparents era and beyond. Probably you get what you pay for. So. It was never about the brand or the label per se. It didn't mean that certain brands and labels had reputations that they proved day in, day out. Mm -hmm. But my point is for me, much less for clients, but particularly me within this menswear community that we know particularly thrives on Instagram. Mm -hmm. It's not about me flashing my, my lining showing a brand or name dropping a brand. It doesn't mean that I don't tag brands. Like you see on my gram now I'm doing lay downs. So I'll tag the items, but it's not, I'm not getting paid. My point is I'm just going, Hey, these are the items. But my point is, is I'm not ride or die for any brand per se. It doesn't mean I don't believe in certain brands. I guess my point is I'm old enough and smart enough not to get caught up. It doesn't mean there yes. isn't value with certain brands, but yes. that overvalue that I think you're referring to, mm-hmm. I don't buy into that. I guess, I guess with my overall steez, I think I'm always zigging where people are zagging. So yeah. And, and the thing is, and I live in the Mecca, I live in New York. So I just, I can't vet just like we talked about watches. I can't validate, even if I had the means, I couldn't validate spending that money on going back to poor Tom Ford on a ready to wear suit. Not when I know, hey, I have affiliate relationships with tailors, up and coming Mm -hmm. people that not enough people have ever heard of and they may never be at the statues of a Ralph Lauren, of a Tom Ford, of a Isimiyaki. But it doesn't mean there aren't other strong players in the game, right? So yes. I'm discerning enough to understand those differences. Yeah, it's like the more just like watches, whiskey, whatever. When you got into first got into whiskey, it's always Macallan, Dalmore, or some big names, right? The sure. more you drink, you grant that insight and clarity for you to see, wow, wait a second, I can use fifty dollars to buy a bottle just like Macallan. Whoa, I didn't know that before. So the more you understand about the hobby you're into, the more you know how to spend your money well and still get what you want. And that's uh, um, really important in in, in a fashion sense as well, right? Absolutely, uh, absolutely. The whole point of this is that your money should go far. So whether it's for me or whether it's a client, that's why I say when I'm messing with their money, It's my money Mm -hmm. as well, meaning that I'm not going to be extravagant with them. Mm -hmm. It it just doesn't make sense. Now, unfortunately, due to COVID, one of my main sources, Century 21, which you've probably heard me talk about, and I've done it on my pod. I've done it on the gram. I was fortunate enough to be interviewed for an article that's on my link tree in my bio Mm -hmm. on Insta. That was a store that really what we're talking about they embodied they had great brands brands you knew a few brands maybe you didn't know at great prices so with that store being gone it's going to be hard for me with clients now moving forward once people Mm -hmm. really get off wfh 
and figuring out, hey, with their budget, what can I do? Where can mm-hmm. I go? Mm-hmm. That place was so concentrated with merchandise that I could literally take care of someone from head to toe and not go anyplace else. Now That's I nice. see myself, yeah, now I see myself taking trains and cabs and bouncing around and I'm already concerned about the customer's fatigue level. So, but again, the whole point is, now listen, if a client said to me, I've got I've got a 20G budget and I want to shop exclusively in Tom Ford, I go, okay, what time are we meeting? So, because you have, you know, it's about whatever the client wants. But to your point, they often just come to me for guidance, for direction. Yes. I don't abuse that. And like I said, losing Century 21, just for me personally, it's, mm-hmm. uh, it's heartbreaking. But looking forward to you having your own Century 21, man. <laughs> hey, I'm I just looking, looking forward. forward. I'm looking forward to me having more clients. I'm looking forward yeah. to the pod blowing up. Uh, the yeah. business again blowing up. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, getting more love from this community. Um, mm. I just established, I'm not going to talk about it, talk about it yet until I, until I post it on the gram. Just establish an affiliate relationship with a brand as recently as yesterday. Uh, that's also yeah. On my, yeah, that's also on my link. Yeah, tree. let's so, go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Come on, go. Yes. I'm getting hype Absolutely. here. No, no, I appreciate that. So, yeah. yeah, you know, I believe in all this stuff and I just need more people to believe in me. So, right, right, right. Um, so it's almost an hour now. So before, oh, it's almost an hour. I just checked the time. Holy shit. Um, before the end of the episode, I want to ask you this question. So for um, our listeners, they would know, oh, okay. It's like as a reference point. So I, I, I think I sent you this question, which is three picks. Your value pick, your I got 20 grand to spend on quality things kind of pick. And just don't waste your money on this brand pick. Okay. Three picks. Go. Sure. Sure. Value pick, Uniqlo. Uniqlo. Yeah value picks so cheap and good quality yeah yeah good prices good quality okay uh the i got money to spend pick Mm. now that's the where the fun starts because you got money to right right so i got crazy (laughs) so i got crazy dough Yeah, yeah 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 all right uh Let's say, let's say, yeah, out no, of I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay, got okay, it, okay. <laughs> Slow down, son. I got it. Sheesh. Keton. Oh, Keton. shit. I've never heard of that. K I T O N. Oh, Italian shit. I, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't read it that way. I read Keton all the time. Oh, yeah. damn. Oh. Yes. yes What's so sir. good about it? It's a it's a classic Italian brand with just great merchandise, good high quality. Mm. And I mean with with the budget that you've given me, heck, I could just spend that on their ready to wear, much less try to do MTM. Right, know, right, beyond, right. <laughs> or beyond. But that's uh it's a it's a great brand. And it's, it's a, you know, that's, that would be the grail. That's the grail pick. That's a grail. Okay. What about the don't waste your money? Just give up on this. Don't even waste your time and money. Gosh. Cause I'm not a hater. Um, don't waste your money. <laughs> All right. This is, this is really, this is more towards my auntie who will never hear this. Skechers. Sketchers. Sketchers. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Yeah, okay, don't spend okay. it. Like, come on. What's going on, people? Eek. Sketchers used to be good. I mean, they used to I be don't. Good. Well, I mean, briefly, but yeah, don't briefly. Like, yeah. Really? Like, come on. Like, ugh. Sketchers. Yuck. Sketchers is like K Swiss. Yeah, and I wasn't down for either one. Yeah, yeah. It's so like they're like the, the same. Day, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For me, they are. I mean, heck, that's another. That's another podcast episode talking about sneakers, yeah. but of all people, the classic menswear guy. 
Wait, but what about clothing brand though? Because the first two picks clothing brand. Okay, I'm sorry. All right, see, it just shows I don't want to show any any animosity. Oh, but, if you okay, don't want clothing, to, it's okay. no, 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 it's not like that. But okay, <laughs> a clothing brand. Don't waste your time. No value. Um. Yeah. Sorry about the Skechers one. Um. Gosh, what brand? All right. I hope this isn't a cop out, but I'm I'm making this a little bit general. Any one of these brands that has a budget line that exclusively is for their factory stores. Do you know what like, I mean? So, like guess? No, meaning like this, like like J. Crew Factory, Banana Republic mm-hmm. Factory. These are items. Yeah, they're they're basic, poorly made items mm-hmm. that are strictly mm-hmm. for factory stores at outlet malls. Mm-hmm. That stuff is whack. Mm-hmm. That stuff is absolutely. I mean, you could spin the you could spin the wheel on how many brands do that. A lot. I just said guess because guess has a factory. Oh, I didn't know guess that. Factory. I've never yeah. I've never been into guess. So, you know, I'm classic with my denim. Uh, to be honest. So I got nothing against it, but yeah. So again, I know, I hope it's not a cop-out, but any of those brands that have these factory store, they're, 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 they're doo-doo. They're they're garbage. They're straight, they're straight garbage. They're straight garbage. And they're made just for the outlet store. So that's, that, that tells you right then, because the whole point of the outlet store initially, right, was, Hey, here's some stuff. It didn't sell off-season shit yeah right right even maybe technically samples and that's a different conversation that's how it was but then they got smart and they said man people keep on coming to our stores let's just make some basic bull crap that's dedicated strictly for the outlet audience it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of (laughs) rude it's wah it's wah wah it's it's just I live not far away from a Gap outlet. It's yeah. in downtown. It's in downtown Brooklyn in the Fulton Mall. Big shout outs to my New York City people on this pod and Brooklyn people. And I was walking with a, a neighbor of mine, senior citizen uh-huh. cat. He likes to do these long walks, and he he asked me to join him two weeks ago. So so we were walking, and we cut through the Fulton Mall. There was a line outside for the Gap Wait, outlet. It's cheap. You know, I'm. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, I just don't like that movement. And to be honest, the people who are on the line look like me. So clearly, it was important for them to be there. I hope. Mm-hmm. I hope that they, they weren't just going to break the monotony and just walk. You know, get out that house. <laughs> but I just looked. I looked, and I was like, sister, like, what, what's going? Like, what's going on? It's like four or five yeah. people who look like me. They could have been like my aunt. I'm just like, really? <laughs> like, what's no order online. I mean, that's a different conversation, clearly. But I, yeah, I don't I don't get it. I'm not saying that you can't find something good. Oh, you know what? Actually, I can now pop a shot at a brand. H&M. H&M. Run away. <laughs> Run away. Well, why? Stuff is whack. <laughs> it's doo doo. True, yeah, and there's yeah, just yeah. It just took really me. It took un- me some time. Really unethical time. as well. Well, I mean, okay, you know that's issues, another issues conversation. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah, right. I mean, conversation. yeah that's another. Yeah. That's another episode. <laughs> See, that's why. That's why I love fashion. So, fashion so much. There's like even for shit fashion, we can talk about it all day. There's just too many things out there. Right, and, and we're also we're interested. We're enthusiasts. So yeah, and that's why I we never. One thing I never fully agree with is when someone says, "Oh, I don't care about fashion." No, in a way you do. In a way, like even if you blindly pick out this purple sweater, you still like the purple. You still. I mean, I, I'm not going to say they're wrong. I think I guess I'm going to side with them. Meaning this: now, one could argue if you don't care that saying something, but it is about priority. And facts, true, and true. and for some people, it's not a priority. The majority of men, 
think they are fly. And I'm here to tell you over 50% of those men should be my client because they don't understand coordination and fit. Yes, yes. They yes. don't, they don't get it. So no, I mean, listen, I love music, right? Mm -hmm. I got a friend of mine. He really doesn't love music mm -hmm. and he just doesn't. It doesn't move him the way it moves me. Right. You and I can't understand that because clearly we're preaching to the converted. But a guy like him, he doesn't. Did I think that odd when he first told me? Yeah. I don't see him a lot anyway, but and he's my neighbor. Uh, he lives blocks away from me. But I respect that. I mean, yeah. it doesn't it doesn't affect me my day to day. Yeah. So, True. True. you know, when someone says they're not interested in something, unless to your point, if they were doing something different, they say, oh, I'm not interested. And then you caught them with bags of gear. I think that's different. But mm -hmm. if they really are not interested, not interested. We are interested. That's why we have podcasts. You talk about watches. You talk about whiskey. Those are things you're interested in. So for mm -hmm. you, you could talk about it ad nauseum. I love mm -hmm. gear. I could talk about it ad nauseum. So it's just about people's interest. Right, right. So make sure if you're still listening right now. Uh, we plug uh, Red's podcast at first, but now we're going to plug it again. Was it NY, New York Fashion Geek? That's your Instagram. My Instagram, yeah. My business is New York Fashion Geek. Yes. Website, nyfashiongeek.com. Instagram, yes, New York Fashion Geek. TikTok, New York Fashion Geek. Yes, Facebook, sir. New York Fashion Geek. LinkedIn, New York Fashion Geek. Even Everything. Twitter, New York Fashion Geek. And the podcast is called the fashion geeks and that the is fashion on, geeks yeah the fashion geeks and that's on apple stitcher spotify everything. it's on everything it's cool. on everything okay so everyone right now if you're interested in learning more about you know men's fashion in general how to you know color coordinates your outfit you need fashion inspiration uh, you're, you're, you're scared to experiment with that pink colored tie or pink colored shirt, go look at Reg's Instagram page. You, you're going to get inspired in a lot of ways and listen to his podcast to learn more about fashion. <laughs> I'm just going to pluck your thing, man. Like, no, go follow you, man. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know about the gram. It's probably teaching people what not to do. I'm still trying to level up on my gram. Still inspiration. It's cool. Like, whatever. Your page, there's whatever function they, 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 uh, they, whatever they can take away from your Instagram, I think it's <laughs> yes, mainly welcome. beneficial, right? Thank you, man. So yes, Reg, it's our, it's today's guest and it's on my birthday, this special episode, we have Reg here to celebrate my birthday with me. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Happy birthday. And yes, thank you guys for staying and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye. Peace.